Um, so I'm going to do a roll call so I know that everybody can hear me. Um, Beth? Here. Lisa? Here. Andy? Here. Doug? Here. Julie? Here. Prabhu? Here. Great. And then Mark? Yes. And Ron? Yes. Okay, let's get started. Uh, the minutes that were sent out, um, those get sent out the, immediately after, correct, Lisa? Yeah. I don't Is think I was. Time? I don't think I was there that day. Right. So, but it looks like everybody's in it, or so some people are in it. Yeah, Beth sent the one for May um, this, this afternoon, I think. Right, okay. Um, I just made one change. I was here and excused. So I just deleted myself from the here list. Gotcha. Okay. Um, does anybody want to um, vote on these? Does anybody have any comments? <clears throat> Does anybody want to make a motion to approve these? I make I make a motion to approve the minutes from May second. I'll second, second it. Thank you. Um, so vote by roll call. Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Andy. Aye. Doug. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Mary, I declare the motion carried. Uh, Want to just jump right into bills? Uh, Beth sent a, a bunch out today. So, Beth, do you want to do these or do you want Mark doing these? Um, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> Um, so we have some things that we had to hold off on paying until we were sure there was money. So one was uh, book carts from Damco, $5,626.33. Do you want, we have to vote individually, so. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> so I need a motion to play, pay Damco in the amount of $5,626.33. I'll second. Does anybody have any questions on this? Okay, vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa? Aye. Andy? Aye. Doug? Aye. Julie? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. And Mary, aye. Declare the motion carried. Next one. I think I have two from Tucker, who uh, delivered final shelving in two shipments. Um, one was earlier this spring in April. And then the last of the tops and side millwork pieces for the large print reading room in Friends Corner came at the end of June. So I have one invoice for $124,902.03 for shelving to be paid. I make a motion that we pay Tucker for shelving in the amount of $124,902.03. I'll second. Okay, does anybody have any questions about this? Okay, hearing none, vote by roll call, Beth? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Andy? Aye. Doug? Aye. Julie? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. Mary, aye. Declare the motion carried. Next one. Thank you. The next one is also Tucker. So you might have noticed there was a remaining amount on the previous invoice, um, $31,225. So that was the remaining mill work delivered at the end of June. I'm looking for a motion for this one. I make a motion that we pay Tucker in the amount of $31,225 even for mill work. I'll second. 
great. Thank you. Any questions? Yep, Doug? Uh, just a quick question. So if someone has gone through that big, long list of furniture and confirmed that we've received 100% because that this is the right, this is the full balance. Yeah, um, all of the furniture has been received for some time. So it was just really shelving and shelving components that we were waiting for that had to be manufactured. Um, so if you walk through, you will notice that by the staff room on the second floor, there is some metal shelving on the wall that does not have any millwork around it. That had been hold shelf shelving intended for the, the vestibule and lobby outside of the community room that we moved and relocated and that had never called for millwork shelving. So that's the only thing I think that still looks incomplete. And if we decided to finish that off, we would have to find another funding source um, on it. But if somebody would like to volunteer to go through the inventory list and walk through the library, I would be happy to delegate that. As far as I'm concerned, they are done. Any other questions? Vote by roll call, Beth? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Andy? Aye. Doug? Aye. Julie? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. Mary? Aye. Declare the motion carried. Looks like John has joined us. Oh, Great. Aye. Uh, hi, John. Next, I have an invoice from Collier's um, for some final commissioning. We still might have one more invoice coming from them because HVAC is still in commissioning, um, $466.40. Somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion. We pay Collier's in the amount of $466.40. I'll second. Any questions on this? Hearing none, vote by roll call, Beth? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Andy? Aye. Doug? Aye. Julie? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. John? Aye. And Mary, aye. Play the motion carried. Next. Uh, next, I have two invoices uh, for services from DRA, uh, one from May and one from June. This is the June one, uh, $808.80. You can see right here what it's for, some additional schematic design and other things, I think. Mm -hmm. Wow, lucky eight. No, 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 no. It's, no, go it's, ahead. Sorry, Ron. it's a percentage of closeout. I apologize. You see 100% complete, everything has been paid that, we, that we're owed. So this invoice is for a percentage of the um, closeout fees. Okay. So I, I make a motion that we pay DRA for the May invoice of closeout fees in the amount of $808.80. I'll second. Any other questions? Hearing none, vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Andy. Aye. Doug. Aye. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. John. Aye. Mary, aye. Declare the motion carried. And next we have a June invoice from DRA. Ron, I'm guessing also close out. I'm seeing now we're at 95 instead of 90%. Yes. For $269.66. I make a motion that we pay DRA in the amount of $269.60 for closeout work. I'll second. Any questions? Hearing none, vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Andy. Aye. Doug. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. John. Aye. Mary, I declare the motion carried. Um, next, we have to finish out the contracted work from Integra, who put in our phone system. They were late in getting us an invoice. Um, we owe them $4,843.73. I make a motion that we pay Integra in the amount of $4,843.73 for. Um, 
phone phone yeah <laughs> I, I just had a, like a, bl a blank sorry <laughs> somebody second that i'll second it thank you uh any questions just a quick question okay. yeah the sure. um what is the fixed fee the 6250 is that just like labor or time there's like no details on that one i have no idea okay i, I know that uh it's right the, at the bottom oh, of that itemized yeah, list yeah i see it um the scope of the work was more so this is like a second payment that closes out the total contract that's all the information i have There's a purchase order, which means that the money is there to cover. Uh, okay. Um, vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Andy. Aye. Doug. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu. I'll say I, but may I had one question going back to the fixed fee. Should we get clarification on that before we process it? If you look, I'm sorry, if you look at the um, the top of that where it says, you know, the project amount or pro project name and amount from them, it says 62.50. So it's almost like that's the, I think that was the amount on the PO. That's what, that's how I read it as well. Yeah. And then they were billing on the 4843. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just assuming that if the PO was for that amount, then everything was checked out beforehand. All right. All right. Am I? Is that is that good, Prabhu? Yes, Mary. Am I? Okay. Okay. John? Aye. Mary, aye. Declare that motion carried. I think I have two more uh, pay app from CTA Construction. This is number 29 for April 2022. Um, somewhere there's an amount. 2000. I believe it is this right here, $2,032.68. And this is to CTA? Yes, CTA Construction. So I make a motion that we pay CTA for April. Okay. In the amount of two thousand thirty-two dollars and sixty-eight cents. I'll second that. Thank you. Any questions on this? <laughs> Hearing none. Vote by roll call. Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Andy. Aye. Doug. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. John. Sorry. And Mary, I play that motion carried. And last one, this is uh, CTA's pay app for May uh, in the amount of $12,590.73. It's pay app number 30. And this is for May. So I make a motion that we pay um, CTA for May in the amount of $12,590.73. I'll second. Um, I have a quick question. Um, so where do I see that there's, um, like, what do we have left? What do we have? What, the, the item nine, the balance to finish, including retainers, that's 70. Okay, so we have 70,780, okay. Yep. Great, okay. Um, any other questions? Hearing none, uh, vote by roll call. Beth? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Andy? Aye. Doug? Aye. Julie? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. John? Aye. Mary, aye. Declare the motion carried. Thanks, Beth. Sure. Thank you. All right. Um, Mark, if you want to give us an update. Uh, so I'll give you an abbreviated update, a good news, bad news uh, scenario. Um, so that starting with the good news, that 70,000-ish 
number that we were just talking about, that was the balance left for CTA. The, the vast majority of that was held for the controls related work. If you remember, there was a, um, a dispute over the, the amount of controls work that was required and the town made them proceed as directed by the engineer. So they were gonna do the work under dispute, but the work is done. Uh, it was a long time coming, but there's one piece of equipment that's supposed to come in tomorrow, <laughs> excuse me, I guess, um, related to the, the kitchen hood uh, on the first floor. Um, but outside that, all the control work is done. Um, this as of just an hour ago, we had our weekly Monday job meeting uh, and Paul from CTA gave us this update. So um, with that, I've contacted, I've left a message after our job meeting with uh, Collier's, uh, the commissioning agent to come in. And now that that additional control work is done, the final control work is done, they can come in and do the final commissioning. Um, once that's done, uh, CTA isn't done done, but that's, they have got two big things that are kind of out there. That's one of them. I should say two big things that are affecting the, the library. And the other is the, the roof leak in the community room. That's the bad news. We haven't really found the source of that yet. And we don't want to rip up, you know, replace the roof or do anything. Remove. We have a quote from the green roof installer for I think 21,000. And then a, a quote from the roofer of about 9,000. So $30,000 total to remove everything, fix the leak, and put it back, um, but we we need to we need to track the the leak in real time. Uh, so we we found leaky ceiling tiles the day after a storm or something. And sometimes it rains, it doesn't leak. Sometimes it does, and so there's no uh, consistency. So um, uh, Paul from CTA, to his credit, he was telling Beth today that if we, if we know it's been very dry of late, but if we know there's gonna be a sustained rain, um, then he will come out and he'll just camp out there waiting for it to leak somewhere, anywhere. So he can take a video, take a picture, follow the, the water and just see where it's coming from. If we know it's coming from the roof, then we can have a discussion with this committee. Do we wanna spend you know, the $30,000 to remove it and put it back? Because if you remember, there was a warranty issue uh, with the roofer, the roofing manufacturer that we put the green roof on top uh, and they want a what's called a slip sheet in between their roof system and the green roof system. We don't think the green roof system is the cause of anything. There's no weight attributed with it, of appreciable weight. Um, but we don't know, we need to find out where the leak's coming from. And sometimes with a roof leak, it can, it can leak over here, follow a pipe and drip over there. And so, uh, it's not as easy as just looking where the stained ceiling tile and say it's, it, it must be coming right from above. You, you don't know. Um, and it hasn't rained a lot. So we haven't, we don't have a lot of, we haven't had a lot of opportunity to find the leak. So I would, as much of a pain as it is, I would recommend not doing anything to that roof, you know, at that cost without knowing uh, what we're getting into. So we need to, we just need to find the leak while it's raining and then make a decision from there. Um, so that's the bad news. Everything else, um, their, uh, CTA has knocked off most of the punch list is done. There's some, there are more, um, um, there's some aesthetic things. There's a crack that they wanna look at down by the teens area. There's some, the barn doors is the, the bigger barn doors is the is the, probably the biggest thing, Ron. Uh, you can jump in if you want, but uh, that we're having issues with and that's more of a design related thing. Uh, we've got a proposal from CTA based on uh, Ron's office, their design. The community room, there's no really issue uh, with that. It's the teen room, aesthetically. Uh, it's, a, it's a solid wood door uh, and Beth wants to see glass to, to some extent in there. So after the meeting, uh, Paul's already reached out to the manufacturer to find out if we can't do full glass panels, how much glass can they manufacture or can they give us? And we're trying to find something that we that can appease Beth, that can release CTA so that we can close up uh, that outstanding item. Everything else they're plugging away with, uh, again, they want out as much as anybody. We're, we've reached the one year mark of 
since the project was substantially complete. So none of us should be on this phone call right now talking about this. This project should be done, but it's not. Um, and the biggest thing was the controls, which we got that on the run at this point. Um, but these other loose items, uh, obviously, we still need to attend to. But I would imagine next month that $70,000 number is going to be much, much, much smaller uh, because all the controls work were then have been done. The commissioning should have been done. Um, and we'll, they'll just be left with the change order work, um, which is small at this point. And, the, and probably the barn doors would be the biggest thing next month that we've got left. How is it that if there's a roof leak, we need to be paying for it? Well, we two things. We don't if it, if it's if it's determined that it was an installation issue with the roofer, then you wouldn't be paying for it. But what's what's muddied the waters is we put the green roof system on top of the membrane without authorization basically by the roofing manufacturer. So that kind of gives them an out, so to speak. So that if we find a, a scratch and a, a, a cut in the roof, that could give them opportunity to say, well, it wasn't by us, it must have been by the green roof installer. And the green roof installer saying, well, it's, it can't be us, we just have trays of plants, we didn't do anything. Um, and so before we get into the finger pointing discussion, we need to find the leak. It could be, it could be flashing, you know, on a wall. It could be, it could be, you know, a number of items. So we need to find out where the leak's coming from, and then we can fix it. And it might be, a, it might be something where it's identified. So only a couple trays of the green roof system need to be removed, patched, and then put back. And the town could forego the, the manufacturer's warranty on that one section of roof. Um, which typically if a roof fails, once it's been flooded and tested and the, and the manufacturer signs off on it, um, typically on a membrane roof, it, it's, it doesn't fail, it's caused to fail. And if something is caused to fail, you're not gonna get the warranty uh, anyway. Um, and so talking in circles a bit, but we need to, we need to find where the leak is before we know if the, if the town's gonna be uh, on the hook to pay anything at all. But if they, go ahead, John. If they determine that it's the green, green roof people, did they not have insurance, or they'll just say we didn't do it? Well, we'd have to check. So that was done outside the contract, and so we'd have to check with them. I wasn't privy to their contractor with the town, so I don't know. You know, that was a donor gift item, and so. Um, we could check certainly easily enough. We'd have to pull Andy back into the fray and or get the contracts and so forth and figure out what they had, what they didn't have for insurance. Um, again, I, I think we just need to find the source of the leak and then we can start the conversation. Because right now we're everybody's just guessing because we don't know. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah. So you mentioned the the price from the two groups to assess it. Presumably, if you do the leak and you find the leak and it's only on like one end of the roof, it's not like they have to take all the trays off. They can just take this trays off that section. So would that 30 K then be, you know, some fraction of that? It would be for the, certainly for the green roof installer. But if you just did that, um, if you, oh, that argument, you won't get the warranty because we didn't put that slip sheet under. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So, I got it. And so then it's a, so then it's a, you still have the discussion. Is it worth, $30,000 of, of effort to get you the warranty. Um, and I would argue for that size roof that no, I, I wouldn't advocate for that. Um, but again, we, we need to find where the leak's coming from. And I thought that the, um, the roof has not leaked since the green roof was put on top. Is that correct? No, it has leaked. Since it has, it, it, it has, has leaked. yeah. Okay. It hasn't been consistent though. I mean, it, uh -huh. it went for the longest, Beth. I don't know how many months it went, you know, it was months and months before that first leak happened. Yeah. And then it's been, it, it hasn't been consistent. Okay. Um, it hasn't leaked every time it, it's rained. And um, so it's just been 
it, it hasn't been easy to find. And now it hasn't been raining a lot of late in the last couple of months. And so consistently, uh, so we haven't been able to find it. Okay, thanks, Mark. Lisa? I have three questions. I hope I remember them all. Um, did it leak before the green roof went on? No. Okay. Why did we not do the slip thing, <laughs> whatever it's officially called? So uh, a slip sheet, It w because all of this was done outside the contract, and so I don't think it was ever, it wasn't on anybody's radar. And Andy got quotes for how that was developed through a donor. It was all in good faith. They matched them up with a green roof installer who does this all the time. Um, part of me thinks that they should have said, oh, we, like as part of their system, they would put down a slip sheet or something. But, but they said after the fact that they put plenty of systems directly down on top of membrane with no issue. Um, so I, I think it was just because it was down done outside of the formal process. I think it just got away from people, and they weren't they didn't weren't aware it was an issue. Um, my third question is: If it is thirty thousand dollars and we have to pay for it, do we have money to do that? No. Okay. That's another um, reason I wouldn't advocate to do it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, right now, the accountant's projection is that. If we spend all seventy thousand dollars in all remaining purchase orders, we will be over by about twenty seven thousand dollars. We have a purchase order for forty three thousand dollars that we are trying to wiggle out of for self check laptop dispensers, which will bring us just you know back into the black with a little bit of extra to spend. At which point we could revisit this. So if we end up over, how does that twenty seven thousand dollars get paid? I have no idea. That's a great question. I have no idea. I would assume we would either, I would start with, can the trustees kick in money? Can the capital campaign kick in more money? Do the friends have more money? And then we would have to go to town meeting if we can't fill from any other source, which I do not want to do. Yeah, I agree with you. How did we overspend? I thought we were doing so good. I haven't received any financial reporting since Andy left. So I, and we haven't, we've also held a lot of bills back because we were trying to figure out what there was. That's the only answer that I have for that question. Sorry. So when there is um, when there is a final thing, I think we should draft some sort of letter to the editor and make sure we send out exactly like because John's question is a very is what everyone's going to ask, right? Like I was waiting for waiting for somebody to ask. I was going to ask the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we should once we figure this all out. I'm just throwing it out there that we should do some sort of public letter stating this is why it's not covered this is what we found this is why you know i certainly um want to just cover that right thank you somebody who's uh, me should do that yeah i would just comment i i think the town you know when andy left the town dropped the ball on us right we have no nobody from the town that's helping communicate between this group and the construction team except for beth and it's not really beth's job to be doing that piece and when we have all these questions for andy you know andy's not here anymore we're, we're right. asking mark and ron and if they don't know we just don't have anyone from the town that we can go to right i shouldn't say that we do have people to go to on the town but they have not been 100 percent involved since andy left right i mean william and evan chipped in when they could and were helpful certainly but beth overall has been put in a position that she shouldn't be in where she's making, you know, having discussions about roof leak and controls related issues and, you know, construction issues, then, and that's not her job. Just not my expertise. I mean, I've taken yeah. on as much as I can, but I'm also right. not getting, I'm three months behind in running the, the library and doing the things I need to do. And at some point this all needs to be done so I can go back to being the director. Mm -hmm. Beth politely asked us to all leave at today's job meeting, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, any other questions or comments on all of that? Was that air quotes around that politely? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I love you all, but this needs to end at some point. Right. <laughs> I was, I was reading between the lines. <laughs> Don't let the door hit you. <laughs> it's been great. It has been great. Yeah, that, that leads to the question, you know, when does this committee end? Do we end 
when there's no more money left or I don't know. Um, do we want me to finish the job? I mean, that's kind of, we need to make sure this is, everything's nailed down or as much nailed down as, you know, I don't know, Mark can tell us, when, when do you nail it? When is it nailed down as it can nail down? So I think as, as far as this committee, when there aren't any decisions needed by this committee, if, say, if it, say there's a, a punch list item to be done or a, a change order item to be done, um, then it's just between Ron, myself, and Beth, we can track when it's done and the project's done. But there's no, we don't need your input on, on approving a change order or approving a cost or, or weighing in on anything. Those decisions have already been made. Um, right now, we're not at that point because we have this leak issue um, and potential this barn door uh, proposal. So that'll be a proposal that this committee is going to have to weigh in on. Um, but we're but we're close. I think the controls portion is is going to be behind us soon. You won't need to make any decisions on that. It'll just be on the few items that we talked about tonight. So um, I don't. I could see the committee disbanding in a month or two and, and Ron, and if there's a need for Ron, Beth and myself and CTA just wrapping up the loose ends. And Beth could just approve the bills herself. She doesn't need us to approve the bills. I, there, there might need to be a process where you vote to allow me to right. sign off on the bills without everybody signing off on them. That's what we do for board of trustees. Right. Yeah. Right, so I would imagine once the, um, that we're not being wrecked anymore. Right. Any, any, if CTA no has, more requisitions. Right. If by leaving. the end of the summer CTA isn't submitting any pay apps, if they if they've contractually they're done, uh, I would imagine that would be a good trigger for this committee to disband. Okay. Okay. Um, Ron, do you have anything to add? Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, just a few things to follow up on. Um, in addition to what Mark had mentioned, the barn doors, I'm hoping, are not going to be as much of a um, charge as we had seen in the recent proposed change order for what I submitted, because they were part of the base um, the base contract. There are some modifications made, but I'm hoping that it's not going to be a big charge for a difference in materials. It, it will be a wash, but I'm hoping um, it's not going to be as large as what they've proposed so far. They did submit a proposed change order for um, putting a stainless steel cap on top of the glass railing at the main stair, because right now it's just the unfinished glass. And that came in at a ridiculous $14,000 uh, in that range. And in conversations with Beth and Mark and, oh, thank you. Yep. Um, in conversations with Beth and Mark and Paul, the price is just ridiculous. The problem is going back to the subcontractor and saying, you're out of your mind. Um, is that because it's a custom manufacturer? I mean, it's not like it's a standard. It's because they don't know. I chose a standard product from the manufacturer that we used for the top rail on the glass at the bow, at the upper level. And also they made the handrail for the staircase. It's standard product. Um, it's just that the, from what we can tell, the subcontractor just doesn't want to be bothered at this point, And they just threw a, an outlandish number at it. Right. And um, I, 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 it, it sounds like they just want to get out of it. They just don't want to do the work and just want to be over with. Go ahead, Lisa. 
Do we have to use them? Like, can we put it out to bid or like, what are, what are the bidding rules? I was going to say, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong. You can go outside of the contract and have somebody else do it. Right. I mean, this, we, it, none of this was part of the contract. So it's all outside. So if, if, um, from the, from the green roof to signage to other things that you, this committee has authorized the landscaping, all those things, it would be the same thing as that. And I, and honestly, I think this was the way I read the pricing when I received it was, well, this is, this is being priced by somebody who doesn't want to do the work. Yeah. And, and they were just pricing themselves out of it so that we would say no. Um, CTA just wants to finish. They're not looking to run away. They want to make everybody happy, but they want to finish. And so when they get a, when a, a crazy high number and he submitted it and said, don't shoot the messenger. I know this is too high, but it's nothing that they self-perform. They have to rely on that subcontractor. Um, right. And so they don't have a lot of control over the numbers. And so um, puts them in a bad spot, certainly puts the committee in a bad spot because I there's no way I could, I could recommend approving that number because it's way, way too high. What should it be? Uh, he broke down the materials. If uh, if you brought it up again, there's a there's a there's the material itself that you can just buy literally from a catalog, and then they had um, let's go to the top. Um, I couldn't find. I didn't see pricing in the sheet that you guys sent us. Yeah, there was um, there was the material cost, and then there were shop fab costs. On CTA, so we're CTA's cover page. This is all Ron's information. Yeah, um, it's that guy sent. So on CTA's cover page, they had X amount for the material, which literally any one of us could buy for that same cost. And then they had fabrication costs, installation costs, you know, mobilization costs, polishing and cleanup costs, and all those costs just added and added and added. What does the install include? Is it, is it so glued to that, it? Is it? I, I believe it's pre there might be a, a, an adhesive, adhesive on the inside, but it's basically just pressure fit. And you just, you, you're look, we're looking at the picture right now. You just slide it right down on top. Yeah, but there's I'm thinking you, it looks like the end cap too, just kind of pops yeah, in at the end. Yeah. yeah. And there's a, joiner that goes between sections. I mean, it, it would be in multiple sections. They don't make one that's, you know, 20 some odd feet long. It wouldn't be one piece. Um, there would be a, um, you know, it's just the, the cap that slides down over. There may be a gasket or uh, a neoprene gasket that goes inside. I didn't see one in any of their spec that we're looking at here. Um, so it's probably just you, uh, glued down, so to speak, with a clear um, silicone. Mm -hmm. Sim similar to the clear silicone that's used to go in between the joints of glass when it's butted together, just to hold it in place. The only thing modifications they would need to do would be to, since the stair rail is at an angle, you know, the stair goes up at an angle, they would need to cut the top end and the bottom end at an angle so that, I'm trying to do this and look at my hands at the same time, but there we go. So that the vertical joints at the top and end are straight while the top cap is sliding down. Right. And that's, I mean, that's just a chop saw with uh, some sanding and finish work. Yeah, their, their labor, I think, was four, you know, 32 hours, four days worth of installation. Yeah, I mean, this isn't, you know, if, if, if they're going to do it, um, I can do it in one day for, right. you know, a tenth of the price. Um, but that said, I mean, that's just an update as to where we are. And we're trying to wrap up loose ends as quickly as possible. Um, the, to elaborate a little bit more on the um, bifold doors, what I had submitted 
as a design were glass panel doors for both rooms. What they came back with was solid wood doors for both rooms. And those are, thank you very much. Um, basically those are your typical closet doors, hollow core, wood faced. And of course you can't put glass into those. What I designed and what I submitted is more, is similar to the office doors and the sliding doors for the independent study rooms where we have a wood frame with a glass insert. And that's what I designed here for both rooms. And they came back with solid doors. Um, Beth mentioned, you know, when we brought that to her attention, she mentioned that she's not thrilled, but would accept that for the program room doors, uh, which was, um, night, it was good of her to compromise. The teen room, they said, well, you can't put glass in these bifold doors. And we're like, well, why not? Manufacturer didn't tell us. So we asked them to go back and get something in writing from the door manufacturer as to why you can't use glass inserts in these doors. Um, and if it's possible to have a certain amount of glass. So they make him come back and say, well, this is too much glass. And if the door frame isn't rigid enough for a bifold mechanism. And to head that off, the question, follow-up question that we're asking CTA to ask is, okay, then how much glass can we put in there? so that we're not going back and forth and spending another three months resolving this. Um, but it's, it's trying to get answers out of the manufacturers. But we are pursuing it. We're trying to give Beth as much as what she would, would like to see in the library um, and advocating for that. So just a question on that. Did we approve or did not we, did you um, approve the, the wood panel door bifolds? Is that where it got lost? And that's why we got the wood delivered there or why isn't it argument now? Uh, oh no, it, these doors haven't been fabricated yet. Oh, okay. We've been going back and forth over the design, including comments from the contractor about constructability and the, I, I must suspect the track systems mm -hmm. three or four times okay. and change the size of the doors a number of times for each iteration. Um, I submitted this to the building department to make sure that they would approve this type of mechanism on the, um, on the rooms since in the case of the teen room, it's the only exit out. Mm -hmm but we're below the uh, occupancy where you need to exits from that room. But we, I didn't want to have these installed and have the, the building inspector come in and say, well, you can't use this kind of door. Sure. Okay. Um, so we got comments back from them. Um, we're really just trying to work out the fabrication based on the, the last iteration of hinges and tracks that I specified. Okay, so good news out of that is at least it's, you know, it, you still may get the glass. It just all depends on what the manufacturer is saying, right. how much you can have in that panel. And right. Since, since okay. that meeting earlier, uh, Ron, that you and, and Beth and I had, Paul from CTA has already sent that email to the manufacturer and he copied us saying right. just that. If we can't get all glass, A, why not? And B, if we can't, how much glass can we get? Great. Thank you. So I also asked to make sure that I, I asked if he was getting this, this quote from the same people that made the office doors, as opposed to a company that fabricates sliding closet doors, because it's, that's two completely different things. Um, and as far as he, from what he said, as far as he knows, it's coming from the same manufacturer, but. That's yeah, okay. OKEE, -E, which is the door manufacturer. Yeah. So we just want to make sure it's the same. 
it's the same thing. <coughs> um, the did anybody have um, Julie? Did you have a question or? Okay. Um, the last thing I have is I have been trying to get the ADA issues resolved. I had a quote from one manufacturer and my management asked me to get a quote from a second manufacturer. Um, I sent him all of the information and I'm scheduling a meeting this week to walk him through um, the, the space. I'm hoping I can schedule that. Um, our company is doing an employee tour of some of our projects this Friday, including the Grafton Library. Everybody's anxious in our office is anxious to see it. And um, I'm hoping I can schedule a meeting with this mill worker uh, for Friday afternoon so that while I'm out there on the tour, I can walk him through the building and get an estimate from him. But I, I'm trying to push this along, get it resolved. And that's all I had. Uh, if anyone has any questions or comments for me. Lisa, on the on the la on May's minutes, there was um, a corner bed landscaping and grass reseeding for the spring. And it said, um, Doug had asked about that. Is there any resolution for that? The corner bed, where? I'm sorry. The steps, the steps that were coming up and the, the planting beds that were adjacent to them, the, the depth of the soil that was in those. Um, and so, uh, Doug, I forget the name of the landscape company that did the work in the front. So I, I think those are two different pieces. The the jam constructions, the company that did that out of scope landscaping, and I reached out to them, and he basically said they did what they were supposed to do, um, and that if any rocks and pebbles are in that space, it's because they've just you know worked their way to the top. But the main thing was the reseeding of the lawn. And I thought that was part of the main project was they were supposed to come back in the spring and, and do some additional seeding. The, the lawn out front across from the, the town commons would be by jam. The town, that would be the, jam. Yeah, the right. lawn down at the bottom would be through CTA if any touch up or whatever was needed, if it wasn't, if it wasn't substantial enough, I guess. So is the is the issue up top or down below? That's a good question. I can reach out to Jam for up top, but Beth, yeah. is the is the other seating good? I have to be honest. I never go out that door. <laughs> it was a little brown when I got married in May. Um, and if anybody has been back, no one has like stopped by and left an invoice or a report or anything. Um, I, I stopped by the other day and the seating off the teen patio side is is probably as bad as what's out front. So that's jam as well. That would be jam as well, yeah. So I can follow up with him. I can't remember if I included that in my earlier conversation with him or not. But you'd have to check. So I don't know if part of their, Oftentimes with landscaping, they'll they'll say something to the effect of we'll we'll do the work, but you need to water it, you know, once a week, twice a week, or whatever. And so if it if it's browned out, not because of what they did, but because of what the town didn't do, you know, as far as watering, then they're you're gonna be hard pressed to get them back out to redo it. So you just have to check their language on their proposal, whatever it was. And I imagine down low and the, the the bulk of the property, it it should be already on the town's, you know, preventive maintenance, mowing schedule, seating schedule, whatever schedule they have for other municipal buildings. They don't. They don't have it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have one more question slash comment. I saw an email from Doug this afternoon about the charging stations being hit by cars. Has it happened more than once? Yeah, we caught one um, or 
somebody saw it happen and reported it. So I was able to go back and get camera footage, which I, I have to give to Grafton Police Department. I'm waiting for a call back from a detective. Um, but okay. the second one got hit. I don't know when, sometime when I was away. Um, and the, the camera footage is not sufficient to catch a license plate or even to catch somebody's full face as they come in or exit the building. So it's gonna be a real challenge to figure out who it is. They both work on both, like both, all four, all four spaces work. Um, I've been in touch with uh, William Blake, hoping that he can help me get DPW to assist in putting pylons so that there's no further backing into them. Um, and I was also advised that we could stripe with green, paint the curbs in the spaces green to make it very clear that it is uh, electric vehicle parking only because people who have electric vehicles are pretty conscious of not hitting the charging station. And it's it's people who are parking illegally is the wrong word, but against policy. In one case, it was absolutely a big pickup truck that just right into it, went in the library, came out again 10 minutes later and drove away. Okay. Um, I checked photographs because I, if I, I, I had remembered correctly, there is a curb in front of those units, the sloped sidewalk that meets the level of the paving is only at the accessible parking spaces where we have bollards so that people don't roll through the front doors. Um, instead of placing bollards at the charging station parking spaces, what would be easier and less expensive is you can buy a, for lack of a better term, a portable curb that you can place in the parking space far enough away from the curb so that the rear bumper doesn't hit. The tires hit, will hit this little curb. I'll send you a picture. It's what's in every, like every shopping center, right? Every stop and shop has them at every parking spot. It's just a little piece of concrete that you go up to and you bounce into it. Basically. That's what I was, that's what I was implying yeah. in my email. Okay. Because there's a Tesla charging station near my office and they don't have them, but they, they just have their units up on a, but you can, instead of placing a bollard, which would be obtrusive and expensive, you can get these little curbs and they, you basically just drive a spike into the asphalt that holds the curb in place so it doesn't slide back and forth. Um, that should alleviate the situation. They, uh, we also, somebody also asked last month about a shattered PVC pipe attached to the downspout. Has that been taken care of? Okay. Nope. And then Doug had asked about the dedication plaque. Anything else we need to do as a committee for that? I haven't seen anything from that. So I don't know if that's Ron's domain or someone else's responsibility. So the... I saw back and forth of like informal voting among the committee members. Looks good to me. I'm fine with it. But if there's a, if Doug, if you have the final formal uh, signed off, I guess like approved by the committee thing, which I haven't seen, I haven't seen something with like somebody's stamp of approval. This, we're all good with this. Then we can go and get a, a another quote from yeah. that which should be easy enough to get. I assume it's going to be similar to the other quote we got. So in taking care of the uh, charging station, obviously we'll wait until the solution is installed. Can it, the poles be bent back? Do you have to put in new poles? We'll leave them bent. I have no idea. Because I, I noticed that that's one of the many pictures I, I took the other day, I noticed how dramatically that's bent. I can take a look when I'm there Friday afternoon and see um, if it's been, if, if the anchor bolts have been pulled up from the, um, the setting 
or if the post itself has bent. I can't tell from pictures I've seen, mm -hmm. but I will take a look at that when I'm there. Um, the other thing I wanted to take a look at is, has the, has the gate been installed at the bottom of the stairs yet? No. No, it's still open. Nope. But that's been approved, hasn't it? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. Andy, do you have a question? I understand um, Ron's solution with those, you know, movable uh, curbs, again, for lack of a, a better term. Um, I, my concern there, I guess, would be based on assumption um, that the issue is more with people backing in and with the variable depths of, you know, the rear end of, of a vehicle, if we're talking about a pickup truck versus an SUV or a car or anything like that, then it might not be the most effective solution here as opposed to people, you know, if you're driving into the spot, fine, but you're also, I feel like, less likely to plow into one of those charging stations if it's right in front of you, as opposed to, you know, people who insist on backing into these areas. Um, let me ask, um, uh, let me get in touch with a, a, a landscape or civil engineer and see how they deal with it and what their recommendation would be. Right, is it worst case scenario and they take the truck length and use yeah. that as its guide right. or, or? Yeah, so I will ask about that. So it sounds like we still have a lot of the same items open that we've had that we've discussed for months and months. Um, yeah, it would be great. I, I don't blame you, Beth. Get these people the hell out. Um, Should we have someone from the town? Like, could we have Andy ask? Like, can we have some? Should we rally for someone from the town to get more involved? Or are we at the tail end of this and Beth's done it for so long? Like, like at what point do we um, say we we need somebody to step in? We're going to be disbanding. We we need somebody else to step in. I, need I, I, I agree. I think the town should be involved because they're going to have to run this moving forward. We're right. not going to be you know overseeing everything, and the the trustees aren't. It's not their responsibility to watch every little nitty gritty thing. So yeah, I would think that Evans, you know, got to get somebody on it. I, w William was helpful to a certain extent if where he didn't, I don't know how much authority he had, but he, he could chase things down. And, but right now that, um, and he, uh, he'd hand it off to Evan or he'd go where appropriate. Uh, and there were certain maintenance staff that he could direct. Um, and then, but he's, he hasn't been in, on, on a job meeting call in, you know, several calls. And so if we could, I think the way you, phrased at least as is the right way that this project's wrapping up and we're disbanding. There's still some loose ends and Beth needs some help from the town uh, to help chase these loose ends, basically. And whether it's William or somebody else, it shouldn't be Beth. So what is the proper way to do that? Does Andy just go back to a, a meeting and ask, or does Mary have to put something in writing and ask as the committee chair? I don't know what- I mean, I can, I can just reach out to Evan and, and or William and ask on behalf of the committee and just say, hey, we just had a building committee last night. Uh, this is where we stand. It's not fair to Beth to have put her in this position. Can you lend us William to close this out or somebody on, that can speak on behalf of the town and get things done, whether it's seating mm -hmm. in the front lawn or fixing an EV station that got hit. Um, that's, not, that's not the committee's issue. It's not an architectural issue. It's certainly not Beth's issue, but it's, somebody's got to do something about it. So um, a lot of those things, if we if we had a point person from the town, we could turn to. So I could, if you want, I can start there and reach out on behalf of the committee to Evan. Sure, and if you just want to include me in case I need to add any yep. other comments to it, Mark, okay. I'll be happy yep. to do that. Okay. I'd also, can I also ask that Andy get CC'd on that too, as a select board member? 
Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Andy. <laughs> that just becomes the job now. Part of the job. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, for, for positive yep. news, I, I saw the um, handicap accessibility button had been updated uh, in, in that back entrance. It looks fantastic. I, so, on another down. positive note, I'd be glad to show some pictures of landscaping if people don't mind a couple minutes. Okay, sure. Oh, and here's the here's the curb stop thing. It's like a, right. just a little, exactly. it's a, exactly. little thing, a little thing like this that you stick far out from the curb. Yeah, and, and that might be something that the um, the town can do. I mean, DPW might have they have like pre yeah. curb stops they might have a bunch of them that they can just plop down mm -hmm. that or we can go to the local stop and shop and steal some of theirs <laughs> two or three um so we did have a couple uh, donor funded projects i think happen in the last you know month or so um the the main one is uh, some landscaping that's outside this is the um community i, I think in my note i wrote community room but i meant community yes. patio <laughs> um so community patio so all of this landscaping there you'll remember there was some landscaping done that was moved around so it's not like we threw that stuff away we they moved it around and added all this and if you've if you've been there recently um this is this picture is probably a month old the it's tiered like as you go back to the back the the plants get bigger and taller and, and like along this fence line, there's actually some really nice taller plants. Um, I don't have a picture and then just, this is just sliding around a little bit um, as you start on the walkway that goes over to the, um, the children's patio. Unfortunately, I didn't take a picture, but around the children's, all along the back property line, that kind of hill, half hill, all got landscaped. And then around the children's patio, um, I would say got enhanced to so a lot of additional plants got added um, to kind of spruce it up a little bit since that's that was also donor funded. What's the process for that? So, so if somebody says, okay, I want to give you money to do landscaping, how does that, do you work with, I mean, it's so, not really us, but with Beth or who? I who mean, moving, moving forward, I assume it'd be primarily either the trustees or Beth, um, if it was something after this committee's gone. I mean, that's what because Beth gets requests all the time. You know, someone wants to buy a bench or someone wants mm -hmm. to buy a tree and then she would figure out where, where it could go. Because the fence is a structure and it should have gone before HDC. Yep. So um, this was proposed from Andy back, I don't know, maybe October. I mean, this was all kind of part of the out of scope landscaping project. So I don't think it, did go in front of HDC, like you said. Oh. Although it's not, it's in. This is in the back of the property. Also, no, I, I I walked it last week, and you can. I took a picture and I sent it because you can see it from the street, and that's that's the test. Is it visible from a public way? He's standing by the railroad tracks. You can see it. Yep. So I mean, if it's an issue, I guess um, you can come to me, and we can talk about it. Talk about options. Um, I mean, the 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 idea was was footed, footed, vetted. I guess vetted um, a couple times with Andy and I don't, Ron. I don't know if you were involved in that architectural drawing, the con conceptual drawings, um, and the idea of the split rail fence was was talked about early. Although, um, yeah, yeah, I remember the landscaping. I don't honestly remember the the fence. I, I was pretty um, and William, I'm sorry, what, I was pretty surprised to see it when I came back from vacation. I wasn't aware it was happening. Yep. Yeah. Does anybody not to change the topic, does anybody know if the town put in those signs? They did not. And we did we did approach William in advance of this project saying we had this project going on. We know there's going to be put some signs in there and and he basically said that it's going to be very little 
I can't remember the word he used, right? It's, it doesn't need any, any extra equipment or anything to put those signs in. So he was okay with us doing this project in advance of those signs going in. Oh yeah, I mean, they're really basic. Sign. But those have not, last I looked, I was there earlier, I guess it was last week, I did, those signs aren't in yet. Okay. Was it, was it agreed that DPW was going to do that for us? That's what I thought. Yeah, they had a signage company that they were in house, I think. I, yeah. I think they were doing it in house. I, I think the question at this point is is there money there to do it? And if the accountant is projecting us to go over, we, even though this um, committee agreed to fund it, we need to have the money. So it's at a halt until we finish paying out whatever is going to be owed to CTA construction, liquidate that purchase order, and see what's left. Maybe I, I may have read into his email, but I thought the town was going to provide it. I don't think they're paying for it, but I, yeah, we can check. Okay. Yeah. I, maybe I misunderstood and read too much into it. Yeah, um, I know they're just helping us price it out. Okay. Yeah. I can read through the email change too, because I know I was copied on at least one of those. Um, and then, so another project is, um, and Andy, this has been going on since Andy, um, is additional benches. Um, and so if you see on the left, the cartoon picture, you know, this is the front of the, the library facing the common. There's this little circle area, um, nice brick circle area. And the plan was to put um, four benches around that circle and then one bench on each side on that walkway. You'll recall that um, before there was a there was one out here. And in fact, it's it's the one that's in the back of the library. Now it was a memorial bench that's been there for a couple of years. Um, Beth did, and I guess, John, you just reminded me too, that this should go to HTC for approval, even though I think the same bench was there before the project. And it's very similar. It's not exactly the same. It's very similar to the benches that are actually on the common that were installed um, earlier this year. I think Beth and I kind of had an offline, and Beth can correct me, conversation about this, and I did run it past. Um, the chairman of historic district and he said that they're very similar to the benches on the common that it's it's, it's going to be the same bench that you already had so that it should not be a problem okay yeah we we found beth has the we have the original manufacturer and the the model number and everything so it's going to be as close as it is as long as the manufacturer didn't change little things <laughs> um i think that's all i was going to mention oh the patio um, so we also have a donor project um, for the patio. And um, Ron, I thought you had done this drawing, but um, um, I think I'm pretty sure you, you were you the one that had done this drawing? Uh, Ken did it, but I, uh, I did it. Yep. Yeah. So the idea is this is, again, that back community patio and um, the idea, and, and this, I think we need to get approval from this group, maybe not today, but at some point. Um, you know, this was the original design, having a pole here, it's 12, a little over 12 feet high, and then there's just string lights going back and forth. And the idea is for any evening events, um, you could pop these string lights on and it would be a really nice space. Um, I think this was the schematic drawing about just how the cables are being laid and then yes. the string lights zigzag back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, the capital campaign has proposed a slight modification to this. And instead of having this one pole kind of at the corner just to form this square, the idea would be to put like, um, I think one to three poles and have it go with this curve because this is not a square patio. It's got this curve on the side. Um, so I think at some point we need to bring that design to this group for approval. Maybe come back, I can come back to Ron with, with that idea. Okay. Lee, could you leave that picture up real quick of a, seeing the tree with the, the stakes to secure it? Um, was at the high school today? And I don't know, the building's 10 years old. There are lots of trees that are dying that have been cut in half that are just stumps so that we don't have that same ha thing happen to us. If there is a, a dead or dying tree, is is there a plan to take care of it? 
Well, all of the landscaping, both the original CTA and the jam construction was guaranteed for a year. So we saying, would like have- That building's 10 years old now. So, you know, the, the town or the school needs to, to deal with that. But for this, would it be the library that would have to say, okay, we need to remove that tree or we need to plant a new tree? The After trustees? one year, yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. So that leads into my next question. Like, I, I love this, you know, I would love to have this in my own backyard, but at some point, does this become a bill for the town? Like if the string lights break or this pole breaks or rusts and the Wi-Fi or the light breaks, the we're now creating more, all these donor projects are fantastic and I very much appreciate everyone's uh, money and time, but at some point, it becomes a, eventually becomes a bill for the town unless the friends or whoever is going to maintain these. It's a good point. I mean, at least from the capital campaign's perspective with the landscaping is we are planning on using some of the, the donor monies for annual maintenance, right? So uh, weeding, new mulch each year, stuff like that. Um, I hadn't, I don't think I thought about this type of structure if the lights go out, but I would, I would expect the capital campaign would fund those you know, replacing the lights if they need to be replaced. Now there is the electricity, of course, the lights being on, but that's probably minimal. Minimal, yeah. sure. I, I would assume light bulbs and electricity are would be built into scope of budget. But, yeah, and then a rusted pole would become capital. Because that was, you know, that was a big concern of town people when they voted was that, all right, now we're giving ourselves this huge bill, right? We're going to need more staff. We're going to need, it's not just the building. It's, you know, the budget, yearly budget that then becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, more staff, more electricity, more this, more that, more this. And again, we can go crazy with all these projects. And like, I appreciate people donating. However, we have to think about what is the long term budget effect of the projects that we OK. Yep. Um, I don't know if anybody in the committee has an opinion on this lighting structure. A do you think it's going to be good? <laughs> um, B, you know, having the square versus the the curved structure. Um, if there's any strong opinions either way for that, I would say fewer poles. If it's structurally sufficient, would be better. Even if it's square rather than curved, and I would try to get a stainless pole, so you're not going to have a rusting problem quite as soon. Yeah, you, we would use a galvanized pole with a um, uh, an exterior grade, you know, paint like a Rust-Oleum type of paint. Um, the other thing you can do with this to kind of meet it halfway would be to move that post farther into the edge of the um, pave. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be kind of more of a like a triangle or something instead yeah. of square. Yep. Uh, trapezoid or whatever you taught us in architecture school. I, I I really like it. I think it would enhance the space for different activities that would be going on. Be a nice, nice light out there. Pretty at night. Yeah. Great. Yeah, Doug, if you went to a local, you know, a fence contractor in the yard, they can provide galvanized fence posts that are that tall with a cap. Yeah, I think we found the materials. I mean, we've been working with Peralt Nurseries on the project yeah. um, for the, I mean, they, they're the ones that did the most of the landscaping, but they're the ones that we've approached for, for doing this structure. Yeah. Do you have electrical um, outlets, sufficient outlets at the appropriate places to, to plug in? There, there is, uh, there's electrical up here on the top. And I think there's two electrical at the bottom. Um, yep. One there and then one farther over there near the hose bib. If you wanted to put a speaker system, uh, amplifier, et cetera. Yeah, um, I mean, it's in the details, but there are <coughs> anchor points that are gonna go on this wall for the you know for the uh, for a wire that's going to hold the string lights um, i guess depending on where this pole is you know we either have to put an anchor point in the 
the brick or we'd put an anchor point in this, you know, we'd move it in a little bit and do it on the siding. I think that's what, what this one shows. It shows one of the anchor points in the brick. Uh, yeah, it's where that B is. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, looking at this, I can't help but wonder if we need all of those steel cables. If we do the long one at the edge. Can we just anchor the string lights without the perpendicular cables? Like with eye hooks or something? Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like I'm like negative Nelly tonight. Like if we drill into anything, do we um, null, and, null and void a warranty of any sort? Like the same thing with the roof? Like does this project void out any warranties down the road? Not that I can think no. of. You okay. Want? No, I don't think so. I mean, if you, if, if somebody butchered, if you drilled into the siding and they butchered it and left a gaping hole that water got into and damaged the sheetrock on the inside, maybe. Uh, but if anyone with, you know, standard installation won't void anything. And Doug, I would just recommend if you, um, I don't know what kind of cable lighting you're getting, but to put it on a dimmer switch so that you can control the light out there. Good idea. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Doug. Anybody else have anything else? Um, let's see. John, did you have anything from us, for us, for the historic? I do. Um, one, just in our conversations, it made me remember, especially with bills and money, um, that Andy was working on a, a sorry, a, a history panel or some kind of historical that Mass Historical Commission required that we do since we took down the stacks. Do we know if that was done? Because I don't know that that's been installed. It hasn't even but, been designed. So, because Mass Historical may, and I don't know how this gets circled back with them, because I know they won't be happy that that's not done. That's not something I want done. That's not my priority, but I'm just kind of letting you know that could be a uh, ticking time bomb. I, I don't know how big a one, but they, you know, because they'll say, sorry, we agreed to let you take this down and you will do it. I don't care if you have money or not. It needs to be, it was supposed to be done. You agreed to do it. So I don't know how hard ball, how hard their ball is when they play hard ball. So I'm not real sure where where that is going to fall. If what what needs to be done to make that happen? I'm sorry. Could you repeat what what is it that needs to be done? Something about mass the historical to uh, allow us to take down the stacks. The the mm -hmm. three story uh, building in the back required that we have a little history display, and I don't know how much latitude they gave us and what it was. Andy, I know we talked early on about a digital display and it was on an iPad or, you know, I think more or less they want it documented and they want it to be available for people to see. Um, we discussed putting it on the little ramp connecting from the old to the new building. Um, and I just kind of thought that it, that it really was just done because the building came down and that was that. I, I figured that took care of it, but I know they're going to want to know where is it. So he took is lots it? lots of pictures, right? And then, um, right. I don't think anything was designed from that, but I know he has it all documented. Well, and I believe Andy was saying that that um, the um, Grafton Cable was going to make some kind of time lapse video out of all of those pictures for some type of presentation. Andy mentioned that to me. 
but I'm not, again, without that seeing what Mass Historical wrote to us, without seeing that document, because they may say that's fine, but I don't, it seemed like they wanted more of a historical, this is what the library was, this is what a historical narrative of the library. I don't know if they, it's that in depth or if it's strictly relating to that piece of the building that was taken down. I don't know. I mean, Andy would, I guess, have the the best information to answer that. Um, I can but. I can find and, and send out the letter of agreement. Um, I think that it was not terribly explicit and that it could be um, a museum quality display. It could be a timeline. It could be mounted photographs. It could be digital, but it has to be on both floors. So I think the vision was something larger up on the ramp and then something small and electronic for the children's room. But I feel like every time I brought it up, I just heard, oh, that's FF and E and Andy will do it and it will get done. Mm -hmm. Certainly not anywhere in my <coughs> expertise. Okay, but just making sure that we're aware, even though we're closing everything out, that's part of what needs to get closed out. And it may have some cost. I would hope small if there's a cost uh, associated with it. Um, this one hopefully is a slam dunk. Um, on the common, um, we're working on the Historic District Commission is working on um, restoration of the common and the, I think recreation had planted a, an evergreen little Christmas tree where the big tree had fallen and was destroyed. Um, we're gonna try to get a larger tree and they wanted to know if the library wanted the little tree that's there on their property. Do you have any use? Because we sure hate to get rid of it. Um, is is there? A, it, it, I don't know if it's blue spruce is the right term for it, but if is there anywhere in the landscape plan who would be the person that I should ask other than this group? Um, Doug, trans. To, sorry, to transplant a, an existing tree onto the right. library property. It's probably four feet tall at the most. It's just right um, where the old, you know, twenty foot tree is. It's just right by the behind the bandstand, between the bandstand and the the split rail fence, or the white picket fence. Whatever. And John, to. can it mm -hmm. eventually screen the? <laughs> The units <laughs> on the roof. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So I'm all for gonna, it. I think this it is, might take a little while to grow. It's so okay. Out. It's okay. We're quicker than we'd come up with seventy grand or whatever it costs. <laughs> so we we're trying to find a, a home for that. So it's not like it's going to happen tomorrow. But I said we have a meeting coming up. I will ask. So if anybody that's doing landscaping as any interest in trying to find our home for it on the library grounds, we would be more than happy to uh, to help with uh, getting that transplanted over here. Um, and then related to what you just mentioned, we'll segue right into the roof screen. They asked where that stands. And I said, well, I know there's no money, but is there a, because I thought we had a specific plan that all we have to do is have the money to write the check to do the work. Is that is that correct, Ron? Yes. Okay. We had a design approved by the historic uh, the HDC. We got an estimate for it, and it was voted down. Okay. And then finally, and this is historical commission, not district commission, um, with the weights and measures. And we've been working on, we had the weights and measures that were originally um, either given or purchased by the town in the mid 19th century restored. And we're gonna move them to the library. And now Bob Berger says, oh, oh no, we've, we've installed the electrical outlet for them. We can't put it there because there may be a problem with, um, uh, I don't know if it's the, the, I went over to just look, the fire alarm. I'm not real sure what kind of clearance that the, that needs um, between anything underneath of it. Um, but it just seems it's one thing after the next. And he's been, his hands are all over it. So I don't know why he couldn't have said, well, why are we putting an electrical outlet? Because you can't put it there anyway. 
He put it in, he put that in himself, the wiring. <clears throat> And this is why I think it's so important at this point that the town's involved, right? Like, I think it's important that Evan knows this type of stuff. So, um, and that, that email, I just checked my email this afternoon, was bouncing around today. So, I, uh, Beth, I don't know if you have any better answer. I think Bob's the one that's kind of now saying, oh, no, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Yeah, so Evan and I meet every other week, and I, I told him I was still waiting for things to fall into place so he could move the cabinet. Um, and he said there actually may be an issue where it's blocking code required stuff. And I said, oh, well, then I will let you share that news because there's no other place in the building to put it. Um, so Evan's in the loop, and that's the newest communication I have. Just disappointing that, you know, it's it's one thing just to be told no. It's another thing to be then you you spend a lot of time. Dana spends a lot of time. Don, Dave, all these people spend tons of time to get the electrical. We've been we're fighting the bill now to pay for the damn electrical because <laughs> that's all screwed up. And then he tells us, oh no, you can't really put it there. I, I just I don't I don't get it. We are paying a lot of people to be smart to help us. And I don't, I don't get it. I don't and, understand. And John, what is the issue? Is it because there's a fire alarm above? There's a the 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 flasher and I guess the enunciator, the strobe, yeah, the little the strobe and the horn box. I don't know if that can be lifted, but again, there's another three hundred, five hundred dollars to do that. And but I don't know what the code requirements are between the bottom of the strobe and anything underneath of it. I, mean, I don't know, I mean, this it's there's no real detail in the email that he sent to Beth. So that's, than, that's strobe, so you need to hear it and you need to see it uh, if you're hard of hearing. So it can't be obstructed. So, so it yeah. can't be obstructed in any way. But it's the, 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 the cabinet will not be literally in front of it, but what if it's, you know, six inches underneath of it? like? The top of the cabinet. Right. So that I'd have to see, Ron. We'd have to check with electrical, see what the clearance is. But yeah, so I see okay. I can check the that. code. So if it's short enough that it fits under that, it may not be an issue. So Evan may be aware that there's a fire alarm, a, a strobe there, and he may say, "Hey, hold on, before you move it, let me check." Uh, but maybe if we check and, it, and the height isn't of concern, then you can put it there. But it sounds, John, like you're saying that it will be obstructed by about. I, I don't inches. know. I, I, I don't because I, I didn't go to the municipal center because I came. I went straight home and then here. Sure. So I went just to put my eyes on it here to see what it was because I wasn't real sure. And I don't have a date to even see how I, high up. I would think that there's some kind of code that it needs to be up so many feet up off the wall. I would say it's probably eight feet up high. Yep. Off the wall. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you start moving that, you know, you're going to start triggering a bunch of other, right. you, you, the dominoes just start falling. Like we just said, it's like, I, we, we can't keep doing that. Yeah. Do we know sure how small the weight inches. measure? Oh, I'm sorry. And it can, it needs to be 80 inches. Yeah. The bottom of the device minimum. And I was just going to ask if we know how tall the weight and measure machine, uh, or device. It's just a cabinet. Um, Right, but how tall it's is it? It's at least five feet tall, you know, and that's without, it, it could be six feet, It's maybe it's six feet tall. I, I would have to go and measure it. Okay, if what I can do is, as Mary for, uh, Mary said, the um, from what I remember, the minimum height for a strobe is 80 inches. And I will see if there's anything in the code that prohibits you from putting anything, even if it's shorter than that, in mm -hmm. front of it. because the strobe shoots out. It doesn't right. necessarily shoot. Right. So I'll, I'll double see if I can double check the code. And if that cabinet, if there's nothing in the code that says you can't put something under it, mm -hmm. um, you may be able to get the cabinet in there without any problem. Okay, because it's just, we don't want to 
spend money to move it and then be told, oh, no, you really can't put it there or have Bob say you got to move it. Right. Because you violated this um, paragraph of that, of the code. Um, The, uh, you know, if we can check actually also the height and the depth, how deep is that unit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll get all the project out from the wall. Um, because what I would do is uh, check the code, and if I don't see anything, I would do a very basic sketch and send it to the fire marshal and say, this is what we're planning. Mm-hmm. Is this acceptable before okay. it gets done? Well, um, I'll measure it tomorrow and email you the, um, Thank the, you. the dimensions. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did finally find the picture, but yeah, it does. It's hard to guess how how tall that thing is. Yeah, exactly. But it's at least five feet tall, five to six feet, and probably two feet deep. I would. I was. If I'd seen it once, I thought it was somewhere between eight to twenty-four inches deep. It's, it's not here. My deep. head. Yep. But we can. If you can get me the dimensions, I'll see what the code requires. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, just to go back from the other question that you asked um, about the historical display, Doug, were you going to ask? Um, Andy about that, or are we going to put that on the um, Evans plate as well? Sorry, which historical display? The one that's um, that's supposed to go at the ramp because of the oh, three stack. I think, I think Beth was going to dig up the document, right? Okay. And review what the document said, okay. if it had any enough details. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have anything else? No, then I think we can call the meeting. Let's take a roll call. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> okay. Vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Andy. Aye. Doug? Aye. Julie? Aye. John? Aye. And Mary, aye. Declare the motion carried. Meeting's ending. 737. Thank you, guys. That was a long one. We had a lot to discuss, even though we're at the end. <laughs> hey, Ron. Do we, um, do we need to set the next date? Had we um, set a next date? Did we have? No, we probably don't because of um, missing a few times. So. So the, the first Monday is August 8th and then September 12th because of the Labor Day holiday. Okay. August oh. 1 is, is the first Monday. Oh. Yeah. August and, then August, and then September 12th. You're right. September 12th. Okay. Oh, August 1st. Okay. I must have been looking at something weird. I don't know. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> It's first, first Monday, September 12th. Second. Okay, perfect. Six o'clock. Zoom? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, September 12th. Yep. Uh, August 1st and September 12th. Just a heads up, I'll be away that week, uh, the first week of August. Um, but I can, um, I can trade notes with Beth and Ron or whoever booked beforehand. Um, and I'll, I'll be checking emails. So if anything comes up, I can track it down. But in the meantime, after this, I'll get a hold of Evan and see if we can get somebody on board to, to kind of chase down these loose ends that aren't part of the contract, aren't really part of the committee, but need to, need to be done. Okay, maybe we can get Evan to come to our next Yeah, that's meeting. true. Yep. That's a good idea. I would feel better ending this committee with somebody else from the town in place. I'm sure we all yep. would. Right. Like yes. I think um, so the sooner we can get him on board and coming to these meetings, I think the more comfortable I'll feel. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thanks everybody. <laughs>